Many of the codes I'm going to be showing fall within a pattern of twice 11 and 1740. I know it can get monotonous, but I'm trying to prove design, and there is a point to it all, so please bear with me. In the Old Testament of the King James Bible, there's three books that are comprised of two each, Kings, Chronicles, and Samuel. Twice 11 has become more relevant as I've looked for codes, so it made sense to me to look at the second books, chapter 11. I'm going to start with 2 Kings chapter 11. Second means 2, but also Roman numeral 2 looks like an 11. Either way, these book and chapter numbers read 211 or twice 11. What's interesting is that in each of these book and chapters, there's information encoded in verses with certain numbers, indicating Edward de Vere was some kind of king. Looking below the number for verse 17, there's four letters, the fourth being a letter T, 1740, and below that is the word king. So it reads 1740 King. 1740 is Edward de Vere's Earl and code number. Counting the words of the verse, including the allusion to 4T or 40, there's 29 words. 29 is equal to 17 plus 12, with Gematria the twelfth letter is M. In Hebrew, M is Mem, which is equivalent to 40. So 29 is 17 plus Mem, or 1740 and is found throughout the De Vere Shakespeare codes to indicate De Vere's Earl and code number. Also, 2 plus 9 equals 11. Now check verse 11. Right above it is Temple and Spears, or Spears Temple 11. 11 can represent the twin pillars of Solomon's temple, Yakin and Boaz, and here they are just below Spears Temple. Again, 11 is written like Roman numeral 2, so 211 can mean twice 11, and Edward De Vere was Shakespeare. If we then start counting, words 22 and 29 both read, The Temple. 22 is literally twice 11, and 29 is 17 plus mem, or 1740, and 2 plus 9 equals 11. And if we interpret the 11 as a 2, and then start counting, word 17 becomes the king, sitting right over the word temple. So the message is, 17 the king over the temple. Also, looking at the verse reference numbers for chapter 11, it reads, Anointeth him king, with the number 17 below anointeth. And verse 7 begins with margin notes dividing the words two parts. I read this as a clue to start counting after the divide. When we do that, the seventh word is fourth. In classical Greek, H or Eta was used for the long vowel E. So fourth is read as 40, with the verse number it's 740. If we then count from fourth or 40, the 17th word becomes the king. According to the Prince Tudor theory, Edward de Vere believed himself to be Edward the Seventh. So here we have his king number 740 and his earl number 17 and the king. I've been in correspondence with Alexander Waugh and Ron Raphael, who both know far more about Shakespeare and Edward de Vere than I do and they've explained that the evidence for him being royalty is very scant, and it's really a dead end. But I keep seeing design here. The Spears Temple, the 1740 codes, the twice eleven book and chapters, and each set of codes with a reference to a king. I'm still not certain what the name of the organization was. Twice eleven brethren, Temple 1740, or Shakespeare's Temple, or maybe Temple of the Rosy Cross like the 1618 Schweigert illustration and was King simply a rank or title De Vere had in the society, suggested by Ron Raphael. Thing is, there's a lot more. Now we're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 11, again twice 11. Just like before, check verse 17. After four words, there's the word the. H is eta in classical Greek used for the long vowel e, so the becomes t. The word after it is king, so it reads 17-4-T king. There's 29 words total, 29 equals 17 plus mem, or 1740, and 29 is 2 plus 9 equaling 11. Now I think there's some wordplay going on here. The 17th word is years, followed by 4-3 and years again, but the letter Y in years looks almost like a V. This kind of looks like it says 17 veers, 4-T veers. And notice above it, it reads, The Son of Solomon. 
We're still in Second Chronicles chapter 11, looking now at verse 11. Start counting, and the 29th word is spears. Again, 29 represents 1740 and 11. Now we're looking at verse 22, or twice 11, and I believe there's a message hidden here. The 17th word is for, followed by he, and then the letter T in thought. If we unscramble those letters with H being the letter E, we get 4T, or 1740. Focus on what's printed after the colon. For he thought to make him king, with he thought in a reduced font. Maybe this is a hint telling us to think about something. The words before and after he thought are four and two. Four, two, forty-two. I think the words he thought are diminished because we're supposed to think and read the words before and after it. So if four, two, or forty-two is the message, what does it mean? With the repeated count, 42 equals two T's, or the double tau initials found in the sonnets. A while back I found a palindrome, also in the Bible, that read one way tells us 2T, 4T, 4E vir, and the other way, E vir, 40, 42. Edward de Vere's code number is 40. Other names are the fourth T and four T's. Also, he's two T's, which is 42 with the repeated count. This is going to become more significant by the end of the video. So if 4-2 or 42 is equal to 2 T's, this reads T-T, make him king. Remember, De Vere is 4-T and 2-T, or 40 and 42, and those are the same initials that appear in the sonnets and, I believe, in the first folios to the reader poem. Please see video 18 and the addendum. That's the message after the colon, but look at the words before it. There's the sun under the number 22. I think the message is, to be ruler among his brethren, T.T., make him king. So in verse 22, or twice 11, there's references to a son ruling among his brethren and making T.T. a king. So just like Second Kings chapter 11, Second Chronicles chapter 11 has 1740 codes and messages about a king in verses 17 and 11, as well as verse 22, or twice 11. Now we're looking at the third book of the Old Testament that's comprised of two books, 2 Samuel chapter 11. If you've been doubting that I'm talking about Edward de Vere, this might clear it up. First check verse 17. There's four words followed by the word the. H or eta can be read as e, so we have 17 for t. Over the verse number for 17, it says, valiant men were. In Latin, valiant is viri fortissimi. Notice the word vir. Another word for valiant is Fortes, which is a name found throughout the Sonnet and First Folio Codes for Edward de Vere. Next to valiant is the word men. In Latin, man is vir, V-I-R. And next to that is were, spelled W-E-R-E. -E. Thing is, a W is comprised of two V's, so were can be read as V-V-E-R-E, -E, double V, vir. So three times above the number 17, there's a reference to vir. Valiant men were is viri fortissimi, or fortis, vir, and double v vir. Now, like before, check verse 11. 11 resembles the pillars of Solomon's temple, and directly beneath it is the word ark. Maybe you've heard the story about how the Templars found the Ark of the Covenant beneath Solomon's temple, and I find it interesting that following the same patterns as the other second books, the word ark sits right beneath the symbol of the twin pillars. So just like the second books of Kings and Chronicles, chapter 11 of Second Samuel has a 1740 code in verse 17, this time with the message using De Vere's name, and also a significant word connected to the number for verse 11. To me it's obvious that someone used the idea of twice 11 to encode information about Edward De Vere, but what does the ark reference mean? We find it again in Joshua chapter 3, verse 17. If you count the letters or the words, the fourth begins with T, 1740, and just above the 17 is the word ark, 1740 ark. 
I found that sometimes the words in the title line are connected to the information in the codes. Maybe it's all the time and I just haven't figured them out yet. Here it says, Jordan is dried up. Everyone knows the story of Moses parting the Red Sea, but it also happened again with Joshua and the Jordan. The waters were divided by the power of the ark, and the Israelites crossed. In the verse, Jordan is the thirtieth word. Now if the Jordan is dried up, then don't count it, given the verse twenty-nine words. Twenty-nine is seventeen plus mem, or seventeen forty, and two plus nine equals eleven. So why is this appearing in verse three? It's not because of the Trinity. Three is written with three ones, or three letter I's. Looking at the repeated count, three I's are equal to fifty-five. In Roman numerals, five is written with the letter V. Two fives, then, can be written as VV, De Beers double V initials. The same idea is used in Sonnet 55 and elsewhere in the Bible. I don't know if this is anything, but notice the word over lines up perfectly above the four ones of chapter four. I was thinking that maybe O and over can be read as a zero, meaning not to count it, like with the word Jordan, making the letters V-E-R the 29th word for 1740. Four is veer in Dutch and German, but also it's two elevens, or twice eleven. In video 17, I point out a 1740 temple code found in 2 Chronicles, also in chapter 3, verse 17. Again, 3 is printed with three letter I's. Three letter I's are equal to 55 with a repeated count. 5-5 five, five in Roman numerals is VV, De Beers initials. Along the title are the words, The Building of the Temple, and verse 17 explains the raising of the pillars, Joachim and Boaz. On the preceding page is chapter 2. We're now in Second Chronicles chapter 2. 2 is written like 11, so again we have twice 11. Along the title it reads, Preparation for the Temple. Just below the verse reference number for 17 is the word temple. Counting the number of letters after 17, there's 17 followed by the words for the or for t, then building of the temple. Keep counting and the 40th letter is the t in temple. So, with the number 17 above it, it reads 1740 Temple. In verse 17, there's four words followed by the or T, 1740. And above chapter 2, the number for verse 17 sits atop the word fourth or 40, 1740. And verse 4 sits above the word name. It's the only verse that begins at the top of either page, and if four in Dutch and German is Veer, this is telling us the name is Veer. The other twice eleven book and chapters I've shown had messages in verse eleven. We're still in Second Chronicles chapter two, which is written like an eleven, so I was thinking that there might be a message in this verse. Remember this can be understood as twice eleven because we're in the second book, chapter two, which looks like an eleven eleven. So this can be read as twice eleven answered in writing, which is exactly what De Vere did as Shakespeare. After that, if we then start counting, king is the seventeenth word. Now read the message, including the words after the colon. Twice eleven answered in writing, because the Lord hath loved his people, he hath made thee king over them. I don't know, but I see a lot here. Anyway, continuing with the theme of eleven, Let's look at Psalm 11. The verse reference number is equal 5, then start counting the verse lines. Following line 17 is for the, or for t, and temple. 17 for t temple. There's even an asterisk there, drawing your attention to it. If De Beer thought of himself as Edward VII, I find it interesting that I found so many codes in Numbers 7. Looking at verse 17, start counting and the fortieth word is Prince, and under 18 is the Son, meaning his son Henry. 1740 Prince, 18 the Son. And in verse 40, there's 17 words followed by Oxen, code for 1740 Oxenford. Also, from the beginning of the chapter, lines 17 and 18 read, Two of the princes and ox. Also, line 34 begins with ox. 
34 is LL with a repeated count. With gematria, L is the 11th letter, so two L's can be read as 11, 11, or twice 11. In number 17, after counting the verse reference numbers, line 40 begins with Prince 1, or First Prince, followed by 17 words. Beneath the name Aaron is 7 for the, or 7 for T. In this one section, there's a reference to 1740 Prince 1, or First Prince, De Vere's Earl and Code Number, and Aaron 740, De Vere's King Number. This is important because Aaron was the older brother of Moses, the first in line. See, the tribe of Levi was selected by God to be the priests of the nation of Israel. These sons of Levi, or Levites, were to be caretakers of the ark and later the temple of Jerusalem. Moses and his brother Aaron were Levites, and all high priests were to be descended from Aaron. So what's going on here? Do all these 1740 ark, king, and temple messages mean that Devere was the leader of the twice eleven brethren in Spears' temple, who were in possession of the ark either as an artifact or some kind of spiritual knowledge? Or do the ark and temple refer to royalty, and like Aaron, Edward de Vere, the first prince, was the first in line? While you're thinking about that, there's something else to consider. In the sonnets, there's the double A headpiece and de Vere's double tau initials. It's been suggested by other researchers that double A and double T stand for Aleph Alpha Tau Omega, Hebrew and Greek for first and last, which can represent God the Father. It's also been suggested that AA stands for Apollo and Athena, the spear shakers. Since De Vere is 4T and 2T and was Shakespeare, as well as Apollo and Athena being the spear shakers, maybe the initials AA and TT represent the spirit behind the work of Shakespeare. So if double A and double tau can represent the Father and the Spirit, maybe there's a trinity. So who's the Son? In the correspondence to King James is a list of people in the court, with 40 being an unidentified colleague of Cecil's. It's believed this is Oxford. But look at who's number 24, Queen Elizabeth. Remember, De Vere is both 4T and 2T, or 40 and 42. If Elizabeth was 24 equal to AA, and De Vere was 42 equal to 2Ts, maybe AA stands for Arcanum Arcanorum, or Secret of Secrets, meaning the secret royal line with Queen Elizabeth, whose code number was 24 equal to AA, and Edward De Vere, or Edward VII, who was 40 and 42 equal to 2Ts. Remember, Aaron's line inherited the responsibilities of the Ark and Temple, just as King Edward de Vere would inherit the responsibilities of the Crown. Notice also that 24 and 42 are reflections like a king and a queen. So maybe these letters represent a trinity, Aleph Alpha Tau Omega, the father first and last, the son or child, which is the royal line of succession, with Elizabeth's number 24 equal to AA, Arcanum Arcanorum, Secret of Secrets, and De Vere as Edward VII equal to 42 or 2 Ts, and then Apollo Athena and De Vere as the spirit behind the works of Shakespeare. While that's on the mind, I want to point out something I found when I was looking at 2 Samuel chapter 11 on the next page, this time in chapter 12. Remember, the twelfth letter is M, which in Hebrew is Mem, equal to 40. There's also twelve letters in Edward de Vere's name. Verse 17 begins on line 40. Following the number for 17, the fourth letter is T, and just below 17 is Rose, 1740T Rose. Now does this refer to the Rose Cross or the Tudor Rose? Also there's 29 words, 29 equaling 17 plus Mem, or 1740, and 2 plus 9 equals 11. Alright, so using twice eleven and 1740, there's all these De Vere references to a king and a son, the ark and temple, and I can't dismiss it as random coincidence, and I didn't even include everything I found. Again though, is king simply a title in the twice eleven brethren, or whatever their name is? Then why the references to a son?
The book of Job chapters 40 through 42 are filled with Devere codes. I've gone over this in a previous video, but I want to revisit it. At the close of chapter 41 is this acrostic that, when you're looking at the page, stands out. There's a margin note, like a hint, and it reads, Who is a king? with verse numbers 33 and 34 above each line. With Gematria, the abbreviation for Edward, EDWD, equals 33. 34 is equal to LL with the repeated count, but also L is equal to 11. Two L's then are 11, 11, or twice 11, but also 3 plus 4 equals 7. So this is saying Edward VII, or Edward VII, who is a king. And read the message with it after the colon, who is made without fear. Without fear is brave or valiant, which in Latin is fortis. The same with he is a king over all the children of pride. And I think in Latin a synonym for proud is animosus, which means courage. So it's saying that he's a king over all the children of Fortes. So is De Vere being a king a reference to his title in the Twice Eleven Brethren, or was he really a son of Elizabeth, first in line like Aaron, and that's what the Ark and Temple Codes mean? Or was being a king something he believed, a delusion that he convinced others of? Maybe it was just a rumor that had gotten started and members of the Twice Eleven kept it going. Whatever the case, I think all the codes I've found in the Bible, and I'm sure there's more, suggest that the Prince Tudor theory may not be anything new, whether it's true or not. De Vere being Edward VII was an idea even during his day, and someone put it in the Bible, as well as the fact that he was Shakespeare. The last thing I want to go over from the Bible is something I found in Isaiah 63. I know that has nothing to do with Twice Eleven, but it's related. First, notice that it's one of the chapters where the W beginning with the first verse is made of two separate double Vs. Verse 17 starts on the 17th line. There's four words followed by the letter T, 1740. Also, there's 29 words indicating 1740, and 2 plus 9 equals 11. But this is what caught my attention. And the verse reference number is just below the letter M, and mercy is 17. M is mem in Hebrew, equivalent to 40, so reading up, it says 1740, mercy. In video 13, I talk about a variation of the Prince Tudor theory that suggests Edward de Vere didn't die in 1604, living out his days on the island of mercy. In addition to 1740 mercy, along the title it reads, God's Mercies. And on the Bible's title page, mercies can be read as the 17th word from the start of the paragraph, or the 57th word from the start of the page. 57 equals 17 plus 40, De Vere's Erlen code number, like the number 29. 1740 is also encoded in these opening words and lines. Please see video 11 for details. Above Isaiah 63 at the top of the page, this acrostic stands out. Royal 4T, or 40, forsaken. The Prince Tudor theory I was referring to claims Oxford was banished to live out his days on Mercy Island. Or is it that, at the end of his life, De Vere had lost everything, and whoever encoded this is asking God to have mercy on him? This is why it's in chapter 63. With the repeated count, 63 is equal to three letter R's. Three is equal to the letter C. So 63 is a way to encode RC for Rosy Cross. In Hebrew, the 22nd and final letter is Tav or Tau, so Twice Eleven Brethren translates to Brothers of the Cross, and I wonder if the Tudor Rose has anything to do with Rosy Cross. This acrostic, Twice Eleven Brethren, has unlocked codes in the Sonnets, First Folio, and the King James Bible, and I believe it was validated when Sean O'Donovan discovered that the word Brethren is printed in the Folio 22 or Twice Eleven times. And this acrostic, which reads like a palindrome, is also valid because it tells us that E. Veer, or Edward Veer, is 4T and 2T, or 40 and 42. The Veer's code number was 40, and for years people have been trying to figure out who those initials belong to in the sonnets. With the repeated count, 2T is equal 42, and this confirms that 2T and 42 are for E. Veer. And next to it, you can see the words Will and Wilt, which are obvious allusions to Will Shakespeare. So if those acrostics are legitimate, there's got to be more, and these, I think, are just a few of them. 
You know, when you're looking at the page of the facsimile and not the screen, a lot of this information jumps out and looks obvious. It's the way it's printed, and I think it was done for the purpose of attracting the reader's attention. I found more but didn't include them because the video's gone on long enough and I want to start closing it out. I don't know if it's my final conclusion, but I think the codes and messages seem to be more than Templar-based secret society jargon. I mean, I think there was a secret society, the Twice Eleven Brethren, or the Temple, headed by Edward de Vere, but I also think it was believed he was a king. Or else would they make references to 18, his son Henry, being a prince and a king as well? Now, like I was saying earlier, was he actually a king? Or for some reason, did he get it into his head that he was, and was simply delusional? Or for some other reason, was it a rumor that had gotten started and spread among the brethren? Obviously, someone wasn't too happy about James being king and decided to encode it in his Bible, which I find kind of funny. Now, who's responsible for all this is anyone's guess. Maybe this king business is what got Devere banned to Mercy Island. Elizabeth dies in 1603. A rumor gets started that no one's supposed to be talking about, much less writing anything about. Like Aaron, the first son, whose line inherits responsibility for the Ark and the Temple, De Vere, the first prince, is in line to inherit responsibility of the crown. True or not, the powers that be isolate 1740 on Mercy Island, while he supposedly dies on June 24, 1604. I've gone over this before, but one more time. Oxford died on 624, Midsummer's Day, 1604, and his name and title both break down into 6, 2, and 4 letters and 1 plus 6 plus 0 plus 4 equals 11. 11, or 1 and 1, is both 2 and 11, or twice 11. So he died on a day that shares the name of a Shakespeare play, and the year is equivalent to the number used in his secret society's name. Really. How about, instead of 1604, he died in 1608? The following year the sonnets are published. He would then be able to finish the plays and work on the King James Bible, explaining why it reads like Shakespeare wrote it. If Edward de Vere being royalty is something that you disagree with or don't even want to consider, I understand. The King, Ark, and Temple Codes could really mean only that Oxford was the leader of a secret society based on Templar and Kabbalistic ideas. Why they include references to Aaron as a first son, 740, and Henry de Vere, I don't know. Whether their message is about Edward de Vere being a king or a secret society, the codes fit within patterns of twice 11 and 1740, and I don't think that's a coincidence. The Prince Tudor theory states that Oxford was the first in line of several of Elizabeth's children. Whether it was real, a delusion, or a hoax, these messages suggest that, at least in part, the theory is nothing new.